Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. We are on the line with Andrew Channon. He manages the only pure play for cybersecurity ETF, the Pure Funds ISC Cybersecurity ETF, appropriately named Hack. How you doing this morning, Andrew? Very well. Thank you for having me. Uh, could you give us a little bit before we delve into uh, some individual ETFs here, just your background and uh, education in the markets? Certainly. So, uh, fortunately, I've uh, I've had the pleasure of working in the exchange traded fund industry since graduating university. I um, was fortunate enough to be placed on the floor of the American Stock Exchange, which was at the time the primary listing venue for exchange traded funds and have kind of since then worked in all different varieties of the exchange trade fund market from being a clerk on the floor of the American Stock Exchange to becoming a lead market maker for global and international equity ETF products on the NYSE ARCA exchange um, and then uh, starting up the ETF prop trading desk uh, and trading all different varieties of ETFs whether um, you know, commodities or domestic equity and international global equity and all different varieties. And with that experience, um, worked to create an exchange traded fund company where in 2012 we launched our first exchange traded funds. And uh, most recently, as you mentioned, in uh, this past November, launched our first cybersecurity ETF. Okay, I mean, uh, you know, Dennis and I have talked about ETFs and whatnot, and, uh, you know, because you have a lot of, uh, you know, positioning, because, you know, the capital requirements for each stock and in it, uh, you, you have some costs in it, you know, for the daily transaction, and that creates a little bit of decay, uh, natural decay in some of these ETFs. Uh, could you tell us how you combat that? Sure. So that's, um, you, you know, a, a very small part of um, the, the actual kind of daily workings of the of the ETF. Um, I, I think you tend to see more uh, decay when you're dealing with leverage funds. Um, there, there, there's some inherent decay based on the actual uh, mathematics of how, how a leverage fund works and the costs of either derivatives or swaps being used. Um, so, so there are some... Um, ongoing fees with with the maintenance of the of the fund but we actually there's actually very little transaction going on on a daily basis of those um, underlying securities because this is we, we do focus on using passively managed um, indexes and ETFs so um, I, I think that that number could possibly range in the um, throughout the industry but the the more passive uh, a strategy is I believe you'll probably see less of a lower of a lower uh, cost against that. Right, did not definitely with the leverage ETFs, you do have uh, a little bit more of that decay. Uh, so let's talk about the, the ETF that you created here. Hack uh, had a nice gap up yesterday. Uh, you know, you talk about new and emerging sectors in the economy, and you know what's going to drive the market going forward. These stocks have had quite a wild run here. Uh, let's talk about your the hack, and uh, looks like we broke out yesterday. Is this trend going to continue? Sure. So, um, Hack, uh, our cybersecurity ETF, it tracks uh, the ISC Cybersecurity Index, HXR, that was created by the International Securities Exchange. And this was an idea that um, that you know, they've been working on building out for several years now. The actual index itself goes back um, over four years now. And we are seeing, you know, based on the numbers we saw yesterday, the, the HXR hitting new all-time highs. Uh, our, our fund, the, the Pure Funds ISC Cybersecurity ETF hack that you mentioned, is uh, o has only been around since November. And actually, as you did mention yesterday, that also did see a new all-time high. Um, you know, it's it was kind of an idea that we were very excited about. We were very hush-hush about it prior to getting it out, thinking that there was going to be some very robust demand for a product like this. And we've just been, you know, very fortunate for the market timing and um, the, the, the almost immediate acceptance by many market participants for our cybersecurity fund. So we launched it with roughly about $2 million under management back in November. And in just a little over five months since having launched it, we've 
um, eclipsed over $550 million under management. So it has been a really uh, a, a really great success story for um, you know, 2014 ETF launches so far. And you know, the more that we've been hearing about different um, cyber attacks and threats, most recently it's been you know, the ability to hack driverless cars or smart cars, um, the ability to to breach airplane Wi-Fi systems. These are are issues that I think um, really relate to pe- to individuals as a whole. Whereas you know individual spending on cybersecurity had been such a small kind of aspect to growth in the industry, mainly had been driven by government agencies and corporations. Now we're seeing that individuals are realizing just how. Um, just how critical this industry is to them. I think that's why we're seeing a lot of um, new investment demand coming into this industry, particularly now. Okay, so we I have the top ETF holdings here, but um, and you mentioned you know individuals. What what would be the stocks that are more focused on the individual, you know, uh, private citizen uh, cybersecurity versus the one that are trying to help out the big boys, the governments, the corporations? What issues would be uh, to focus on? Yes, yeah, so, you know, there, there aren't many um, pure play, and, and I would speak more so on the individual, on the individuals investing in the space as opposed to individuals okay. taking the, 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 the care right now to, um, to, to increase their cybersecurity. I think uh, many individuals are doing that, but because it isn't as big of a growth area as far as sales go, um, you know, the, the, the main growth areas are coming from these government agencies and corporations. But, you know, to, to answer your question, in our fund, I would say maybe Symantec is one of those companies that do have, um, you know, a, a focus on the individual. They also do have a huge, um, you know, amount of growth that comes to, or revenues that are derived from institutional you know, clients. Um, they, they're they probably most familiar to the individual um, with their Norton um, suite of products and their antivirus products there. So that's probably one of the more familiar ones. And um, you know, looking at some of the top holdings, FireEye and CyberArk are probably two of the companies that most recently have been getting a lot of attention, um, but also mainly focusing on institutional and government agencies. Okay. That's, uh, well, let's talk about FireEye here. Uh, I can remember this stock just went ballistic off its IPO uh, over $90. And I remember them doing this secondary here at 82 and just jam people with stock. Long time to recover here. Been building a base here. Is uh, this thing uh, on the verge of a breakout to the upside? And what will push it that way? Sure. So, yeah, it, it is trying to, it looks like it's working its way back from, um, you know, much higher levels. Uh, towards the end of the year, we saw kind of a uh, potential bottoming um, in FireEye. Uh, fortunately for our fund, that was actually right around the time of, of the rebalance of the index. So our fund was actually allocating a larger percentage of its weighting to FireEye around uh, the time when it was in the in the mid range, uh, in the thirty dollar level, it's uh, it's one of those things where you know I think there was so much interest and in there there's a lot of um, you know investor confusion as far as you know what, if I want to play uh, invest in the cybersecurity space, how do I do it? Um, I don't think you know people are as familiar with this industry as they are more uh, mature ones. So it was coming from you know uh, being one of those um, you know kind of Front, front page names where uh, I think things got you know a little ahead of themselves and then there's a lot of pressure on the CEO to to maintain that and you know I think he was just coming from such a difficult uh, space trying to keep up with you know really high um, you know PE expect, uh, you know valuations that now it's trading more in line with reality and as you've probably seen with uh, many of the high profile cyber breaches that happened to currently, uh, recently, uh, many of these companies have been hiring FireEye and their Mandiant group, which uh, does a lot of the consulting for for institutions and uh, government agencies. So we, we are seeing now that with a lot of these high-profile attacks that FireEye is winning a lot of these contracts. So if they're able to maintain that and kind of be the one of the first companies that people, companies, government agencies will call when they are breached, that will certainly uh, be something that could help their, their revenues going forward. 
Okay, let's talk about the top holding in your ETF, CyberArk. That stock uh, had a nice run off earnings here. I'm not sure. It was kind of near the end of uh, the earnings calendar here. Uh, take a look at CyberArk. Give us uh, your technical take on that. So uh, the interesting thing about CyberArk, they're uh, an Israeli company in the cybersecurity space, obviously. They had a lot of fanfare around their IPO back in September on the New York Stock Exchange. And it's kind of been one of those companies that a lot of people looking to deploy new capital into and wanting to invest in the cybersecurity space were really excited. And you know, the, the timing for, for their IPO, I think, was, was wonderful for them. And you know, there's just been a lot of a lot of interest on the space, and being that they're one of the newer publicly traded companies, I think that has kept them on on front page news. And we're seeing not just in CyberArk, but uh, Israel as a whole has become this incredible um, breeding ground for for cybersecurity companies. So we've seen you know several other companies that we've um, put into the fund as well that are also. Um, out, out of Israel, so it's kind of you know an, an even bigger story as far as where these main um, kind of uh, developmental grounds for this industry where they're going to come from. And right now, we're seeing predominantly these companies that are um, that, that are bu- building up and an IPO and are coming from the U.S. and Israel. So I think they'll kind of be you know an interesting bellwether for. Um, for the the foreign market for cybersecurity companies, and de- definitely worth keeping an eye on as we go forward. Okay, uh, another one. Uh, the third biggest holding, Fortnet, FTNT. So strip it. So they're uh, um, you know a company that's been around for for a bit longer than CyberArk, and most recently had their earnings uh, uh, two days ago, and they they beat on um, top and bottom lines, and I think that you know. A lot of people have um, possible concerns that when they do place concerns in the cybersecurity industry, it's that these companies may be spending way too much and not making enough on revenues. And I think you know, Fortinet, uh, you know, being one of the companies that reports earnings earlier in the cycle for cybersecurity companies, I think a lot of people are looking towards Fortinet as being, um, you know, you know, how to judge what the other earnings of the companies coming out later. And the cycle will do, and we also saw uh, you know similarly with with Checkpoint, another company that's earnings uh, came out the same day as Fortinet, and you know I think these these early companies will be those bellwethers, and you know I, I think it kind of you can look at the individual companies in the space. So many of them uh, specialize in different areas. So we'll talk to different analysts, and they'll tell us, you know, you know we we like the cybersecurity space. Um, you know, people will call up and they'll say, "Give us, you know, three companies, your three favorite companies to play." And they're telling us, "You know, I, I know the space. I can just give you my three favorite companies or so." But by picking individual companies in the cybersecurity space, you're really not getting the full exposure to the industry. You might be picking one, two, three specialists out there, but that's not really covering the whole spectrum of what cybersecurity is. So I think you know, kind of the the neat aspect of having an ETF. And you know we we can you know we're we're going down to individual names, but by being able to invest in essentially 31 companies from around the globe, uh, many of these companies specializing in their own different areas, gives a, a really neat um, you know opportunity for investors that aren't specifically experts in every single company or every single technology, but to be able to play the larger theme that we see, which is increased spending on cybersecurity solutions. Okay. All right. Uh, I know you're looking at the broad ETFs here, but uh, we do have another issue uh, coming out of the chat here, and that's VDSI. That's coming from Rob Hood, and uh, he says, uh, have a footprint in the college area. Uh, Give us your take on VDSI, Vasco Data Security International Common Stock. Sure. So, you know, uh, going back to kind of where these different threats and breaches are coming uh, one of the areas that I think scares a lot of people is when you see potential breaches in the financial sector. And, you know, J.P. Morgan being probably one of the, the biggest ones just kind of shows you that no matter how big or small your your financial institutions may be, they're all vulnerable. 
And one of the big pushes in cybersecurity is trying to convince people that one-step authentication is not um, it, it is no longer, you know, really considered protection. And Vasco Data has been um, bringing on many financial institutions as clients and government agencies with uh, their two-step uh, multi multi-factor authentication. So essentially, you know, how you log in and access pertinent information, they're trying to to make that wall even thicker and more difficult to get through uh, to those that don't have access. So as um, you know, more companies look to beef up their security protocols, this is one of those uh, th- those areas that could benefit. And Vasco Data is one of those companies that's on the fourth of password authentication. Solutions. Okay. All right. Just uh, two more issues before we let you go. Uh, or some whole big holdings in the ETF. Palo Alto Networks, P-A-N-W. Sure. Yeah, that's uh, another one of the, the the companies that seems to draw a lot of attention in the fund. And certainly, one that I, I think a lot of investors were happy to see us us holding in the fund. Um, you know, I think they're one of these U.S. companies that is continuing to get a lot of a, a lot of a lot of press coverage when they do well. It, I don't think that they they have the ability to to move the needle as fast as some of these other companies that we've mentioned, like a cyber or fire eye, but certainly a, a very integral um, component in the cybersecurity industry um, when it comes to to, uh, to to firewalls. And and I think that that they they certainly do have a lot of potential. And you know, as as news comes out positive or negative for this company, I think that's one that will you know drive the other companies as well along with it. Okay, and then uh, the last one before we let you go, Barracuda Networks, CUDA. Sure, you, you know it's it's uh, it, it it really is uh, you know such a such a wide industry. I think that you know adding Barracuda to your overall um, you know portfolio, like we said, through the ETF is, is maybe the way that um, I think people will like to play in this space. I think picking individual names can be very difficult. Some some companies' technology could become obsolete in a day, a month, or 10 years from now. And picking who that winner is is going to be, you know, very difficult if you're only looking at a couple of names. So I think, um, you know, pe- people can do, uh, you know, potentially very well or, or they get a very difficult time picking individual companies especially as this market is constantly evolving. So I think having Barracuda in your portfolio is, is a really um, good way to uh, play, the, play the space, but when added to other companies also specializing in different cybersecurity um, solutions. Okay, and just uh, final thoughts, let's just take a look at your ETF, HACK, H-A-C-K, see if it's uh, following through today in today's session. Do you have any upside targets for the issue or just playing the every day as it comes? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, the the thing to look about at the ETF is that, um, you know, investors are investing in it for different reasons. I think some are investing in it for specific event-driven things, so... Um, we have noticed that HXR, the index that the fund tracks, has um, on many occasions outperformed broad-based technology indexes on days when we've heard uh, announcements of major cyber breaches or cyber attacks. So we know that people are investing for the event-driven aspect of that. Um, you know, we saw last earnings cycle that many companies in the, in the fund had had extremely strong um, earnings announcements. And that really propelled the entire industry upwards as a whole last uh, last quarter. So right now, as we're embarking on that um, on, on this new earnings cycle, I think um, that hack could be that interesting benchmark for the for the overall industry. So as far as putting different price targets, it's 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 a pretty difficult thing with uh, with ETFs when you're looking at you know that that price is actually being driven by 31 different companies. Um, so you know we, we we don't give we don't give price targets, but we think that individuals that are looking to invest in this theme of um, you know long term increase spending on this on this industry um, that this is a uh, you know a very interesting way for them to play it and relatively low cost and easy to use. 
Okay, Andrew Channon, CEO of Pure Funds, joining us here on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Thank you. Discussing cybersecurity stocks. Great information. We'll talk to you again soon. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.